Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's karma cards. I hope that you are staying hydrated during this very hot window of time and that you are safe and enjoying your summer. If you're in the Northern hemisphere and enjoying a nice relaxing winter, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, energetically, we're in a kind of quiet pocket, which is always nice. I think it's nice to have a little pocket of quiet, especially because We've got other energies coming up next month. We're going to have our next Mercury retrograde. There's four this year. So this will be our second one. So that's coming next month, but not now. Now we get, like I said, quiet pocket of time. The next thing that's really coming up that's of importance is the second full moon in Capricorn, which is the bookend of the other full moon in Capricorn that we've had. That is rare to have two full moons in the same sign. It doesn't always happen every year, but we had one this year. And inside this book end is really about this opportunity to dissolve the self-limiting beliefs. And I've been talking about that with the spirit circle group predominantly and here a little bit on YouTube as well, but the self-limiting beliefs and I want to make it clear that some of our self-limiting beliefs are easier to dissolve than others. I know that if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I want to use the opportunity that's being given to me now to dissolve these beliefs, you will get so much traction in this work right now. Understand that some beliefs we hold are more deeply rooted than others. And so it's good to see it as layered, like layered like a club sandwich or a stack of pancakes or anything that you can see stacked on top of one another. Some of our beliefs are a short stack and it's easy to dissolve that belief completely, especially if it's sort of a newer belief or it's a belief that is that has been less dominant in your life. Other beliefs, core beliefs, for example, beliefs about your worth or value, these tend to be core beliefs that go deep down and started early on in our life. We have had a lot of time to build up from that core and a lot of experiences that we might feel validate that self-limiting belief. It's going to take a while to drill down through all of those layers. The good news is in this window, in this period of time, you can drill down through quite a few layers, making it easier and easier to not only dismantle this belief, but also become aware of when it's playing out within your conscious mind. And that's a big win. That's a big win that I want you to recognize and take on that you're becoming more conscious of where it's playing out rather than getting upset that maybe I didn't fully eradicate it the ability to have awareness that it's there is what's going to give you the power to continue to break it apart. And so if all that really happens in this window with those heavier beliefs is that you become more aware that you are falling into that self-limiting belief, then I hope that you're seeing that as a win because awareness is the key to change. Now I want to get to the message I have from the team this week. And that message is all about taking stock. So we're again, imagine we're reading one of those choose your own adventure books. For those who were kids of the eighties, you know what I'm talking about. Those choose your own adventure books were great. We're at another chapter end point where we can go one way or another, and we're being asked to take stock. And this again is connecting back to these self-limiting beliefs. So just because we have an awareness that we're holding a belief doesn't always mean that we're going to take the choice to bust through that limit. We might actually double down and believe it. We might feel like because I'm conscious of it, it means it's actually happening. And therefore I'm going to lean into it and say, yep, I can't do that. Yep. I don't have that. Yep. I'm not going to ever get to experience that. Or this is hard or no one loves this about me or whatever it is that the limit is about. We have a choice point here where we're meant to take stock. And part of this taking stock, my team is saying, is a neutral evaluation. So we're not trying to judge what we 
have seen, but we are trying to evaluate what we have seen. How has that worked for me? You know, I love to ask, <laughs> love to ask that phrase sarcastically. How's that working out for you? I think it's a really good phrase to ask ourselves, especially when we're coming up to these points about maybe you feel like you're at a growth point. When wherever we're at this growth point, it means we're hitting our glass ceiling and that glass ceiling is the limit. That is the self-limiting belief. And we have to ask ourselves when we hit that glass ceiling, that limit, how has this been working for me? How's it working out for me so far to tell myself, I can't do this, or I can't be this, or I can't have that, or that this, whatever it is, isn't possible. How is that working out for me? And if we find through that neutral evaluation, so again, not judgment, but just really taking stock of it, is it working for me? For example, um, hiding from the public if you want to be more visible. How's that working out for you? You might write down, you could do a pros and cons list. The pro is that nobody's judging me. Nobody's critiquing me. That feels like a pro. The con is nobody's seeing me and I'm not getting my work out there and I'm not being um, as effective as I want to be, right? So we're writing these down. A lot of times our self-limiting beliefs serve us in some way. And I think sometimes it's hard for us to see that. We, we, we recognize this is a limit in our mind, but we don't understand that there's a payoff to thinking that way. And we have to get interested and curious about investigating what's the payoff. I love asking that question, especially around areas where I don't perceive there to be a payoff. For example, um, being sort of shy or being introverted or wanting to just <laughs> like for example with me wanting to just do my work and hope people find it not have to go out and be like hey this is what i do i don't love that part i love what i do i'm not a, exactly a fan of marketing or i haven't been i should say catching myself haven't been a fan of that i need to look at what the payoff is from hiding now, when I hear the word hiding, I personally am like, that's not a positive it, to me. It feels like cowardice, right? That's how I, my mind would associate that. And if I'm not careful, I could go into judgment and start judging myself for doing that thing. Instead, I want to get curious and ask myself, what is the payoff? There is a payoff in our perceived negative behaviors, in our perceived self limits, we're getting something out of it. You know how I know this because human nature works to reward itself. It, it likes to reward itself. It doesn't work to suffer. It works to get the cookie or get the goal or get the prize. So there is something that is rewarding us in these self-limiting thoughts, in these behaviors you may perceive as a negative or a detriment to you. It's giving you something. So we have to ask ourselves what that is. In my experience, it's usually a form of protection. It's protecting you from something. By hiding, you can't be rejected because nobody can see you, right? Like that's a way that hiding is a payoff. Can't be rejected. Can't have someone say no or tell you they don't like it. It's you're hidden. So you can see that there's a payoff there that keeps you doing the same activity and my team is encouraging you to consider consider one, one limit, one self-limiting belief, something that it's like, I want that and I can't get to it. There's the limit inside it. So what's stopping you from having it, doing it, being it? It's usually a, a self-limiting thought and a behavior will develop from that thought. And I would love for you to, again, get that neutral curiosity. So no judgment, look at it. And decide, okay, this is what it is. And now ask yourself, honestly, where's the payoff in this behavior for me? Then compare it to the cons of that behavior. So obviously, if we go back to hiding, the cons of hiding is that you don't progress very far because nobody can see what you're doing. You don't get the feedback that might help you grow. Nobody knows what you're doing. And so it doesn't have that same kind of weight or relevance you'd like it to have and so on. And obviously when you put the two together, yes, 
not being rejected feels good, but it doesn't feel better than having something thrive and grow, which means you'd have to risk being visible, right? So hopefully my example shows you how you can identify your own self-limiting belief, get neutral and curious about it, identify the payoff behind it, and then balance that. Again, take stock and look at that payoff versus the payoff of having it, having yourself move forward in whatever direction you desire. And hopefully by that taking stock, you will make then the next choice. So again, choose your own adventure, right? Either, yep, it's worth it. I like that comfort. I like my shell. I like my hiding places. And therefore I continue down that path or the pain of missing what I could experience is too great that I must get out of the shell and I must move in the direction of visibility and being seen and also risking the criticism or the rejection that your hiding is keeping you from. So what's your paths and what will you choose? I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know where it is you're struggling. And if you're really having a hard time seeing it, put it in the comments and I will do my best to shed light on it if I can. And if you really need help with that, of course, you can consider booking a discovery call with me and doing one-to-one -one coaching because that's where I can really help you dig in and identify it. Seeing that bigger picture is definitely one of my coaching skill sets. And I'd love to show you the path forward and how what you're doing is serving you in some way and helping you identify, but is it serving you in the way that makes you feel like you're living in your true potential? All right. Now with that, let's go into this week's karma cards and see what else the cards have to add. All right, if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what's the message for this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you tune in with that beautiful intuition of yours and feel what is the guidance you would most like for this week? Are you looking for action related guidance or are you interested in seeing how things resolve over the week? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for July 10th through the 17th and the flavor of this reading got a good one We've got the sun i love the sun so the sun is all about the realization coming to fruition and the sign of aquarius aquarius being about that future so again where are you going what are you heading towards and the house it's connected to happens to be the house that aquarius rules which again represents the future it's the 11th house the house of hopes, dreams, friendships, and groups. And so this is very much telling you that whatever is happening at this moment that's connected to your future has an impact beyond your personal life. It has a ripple effect. And so we're not just getting out of our own way, but we're getting out of the way of a path of growth, growth that could actually help someone beyond yourself. All right, for those who are choosing action, your spiritual action is to demonstrate your vision for humanity's sake. This one's kind of easy because it's kind of just reiterating <laughs> what I just said. Demonstrate, act as if, your vision. What do you want for humanity's sake? It, ha it has an effect past you. So many times... I, I think that when we're thinking about our own future, we're, we're not always aware of the impact we're going to have on someone else. And that's okay. I think initially we need to be very clear about the impact it's going to have on us. But understand this is bigger than you. And if you're following your open heart, if you're being heart led, it is most definitely connected to all of us, right? Because when our heart is open, we're in alignment with true oneness. We're acting from that place of oneness. And of course, it's going to ripple out. Everything that we do has a ripple effect. It has a, a consequence. So consequence meaning a neutral term, but it has either a positive impact or a negative impact. In this case, our vision, what we hold 
for the future most almost always has a positive impact if it's coming from that heart-led space mental action at this time realize what is new and different about your hopes and wishes there is something about this point that's different this is a taking stock point like the team said earlier so as we're taking stock about what it is we desire that ceiling we desire to break through new information is now available another type of clarity is here for you which would demonstrate that there is some movement in the mind there is some opening up a growth mindset is coming in in places where it previously wasn't before whenever the mind opens up in an area we can see things from a broader perspective so they're letting us know this broader perspective is here right now and you're going to see that goal that big vision a little differently with a little nuanced clarity at this time physical action at this time act like a leader use an unconventional way and do it for the future okay my favorite unconventional way i'm so again it's rapid it's the repetition of the message right act like a leader you're the one who chooses use an unconventional way this is the part i want to talk about and then of course doing it for the future it has a ripple effect the unconventional approach i like to use is bringing the future into the present meaning that i'm actually going into the quantum field i'm collapsing all time into one moment and i'm visualizing the path i desire and seeing its outcome i love to do that and i love to communicate with future me and ask her questions you would think that this is something you're just pulling up in your imagination but it's much deeper than that you're actually pulling on sort of the threads of time if you will if you understand that time isn't linear but time is all time it's all coexisting at once and all future timelines are available but the one that we're pulling in is the one we desire that is a very specific timeline as we communicate with that version of ourselves, we can actually get information that will speed up our process to becoming that version of ourself that version is more than happy to share with you what you need to do to become that person because that means that that's the one that life force energy is going to move into that's the fun that is the timeline that will be fully actualized and so it it's beautiful because you're not going to experience gatekeeping or like figure it out for yourself you will get information that is very actionable that will help you expedite that timeline so again taking stock thinking about what you want visualizing the future seeing what's new and different and using an unconventional approach so now let's take a look at outcomes for the sun in aquarius in the 11th house of hopes and wishes spiritual outcome at this time the creation of genius to experiment with freedom again this is a unique period where we can truly set ourselves free from the limiting beliefs of our past our self-limiting beliefs they weren't made today they were made in the past by an older version of yourself and i'm sending so much love to those older versions of ourself because again they're the foundation in which this version is built on so it's no no hate no anger no frustration towards an older version just simply recognizing that self-limiting belief wasn't created by this version of me it's something i'm carrying over from the past and we have a radical moment here of awareness to go i don't have to carry that anymore that glass ceiling doesn't actually exist for me boom it's going to take maybe a little bit more than that but you understand what i'm saying here we have a chance to set ourselves free from self-limiting beliefs and you have the genius right now to do it that genius is again awareness awareness of the fact that i didn't actually create this ceiling now I created that 10 20 however many years ago that glass glass ceiling is quite brittle i can break through it quite easily i'm so different now of course i wasn't ready back then that's okay i'm ready now and you're going to find out that you have the ability to set yourself free mental outcome at this time the gaining of respect for or from 
the discoveries of associations. Again, this sort of feeds off the last statement, a former version of you. You need to recognize where that belief that you're trying to break down was built. For example, a, a newer self-limiting belief may have been built from an embarrassing experience you had last year, let's say. And that's when that could have been built. Issues around self-worth and rejection and things like that may have been built a long time ago, early childhood possibly. This moment is about correctly taking stock and it's almost like time stamping. When did this start existing in my mind? When did I believe I couldn't, I, I can't, I, I don't, I whatever. When did I believe that? Again, neutral curiosity. Where did that come from? That I'm not enough. Hmm. And you might have to sit with it. You might have to meditate on it. But the point is you're going to understand and correctly identify, correctly timestamp and take stock of when that belief activated in your life. And just like I said before, you're probably going to discover what former version of you held it. And that it was, it's almost like when you're moving houses is what they're showing me. And you have stuff that's in an attic or in the garage. And it's not something you've thrown away or really looked at. It's in a box maybe. And you just keep packing it up and taking it with you. And you've never really reassessed that. Maybe you didn't have time. Maybe it wasn't the right moment. Now it's like we're going through those boxes and going, why do I take this box of hangers from place to, I don't even use that kind of hanger anymore. Why am I taking that from place to place? I haven't even opened this in years. I hope you understand the metaphor, but you get what I mean. It's like we do it without really thinking about it. And we're in that window of time where it's like, okay, we're going through it now. We're taking stock and we're thinking about it. We're going, do I really have to keep carrying this with me? Some of these old thoughts might be so obvious. It's like, no, I actually don't believe that anymore. I'm just comfortable telling myself that I can let that go now. Other things we might have to sit with it longer and, and understand that maybe we feel like we're not allowed to let go of it. A lot of times the inner child will hold those types of feelings of like, I don't know if I can, if I'm allowed to let this go because I was trained to think that way. During this period, again, you're going to have an an awareness and the ability to set yourself free. Physical outcome at this time, things brought to light or life resulting from the eccentricity of your circle of friends. If you have friends who are also on a self-development, spiritual growth journey, I feel like this is going to be where you get to have these conversations that can be very illuminating especially if, you know, they're also doing work similar to this and they're having these aha moments and sharing it for you. That could be another key to awareness and seeing it going, oh my gosh, now that you say that, I'm thinking about it. And yeah, it, that's how it's hitting me or, oh, it hits me a little different. Really surrounding yourself with people who are doing this work right now is going to be such it's going to be such a blessing and a form of accelerated growth because the key again is in awareness. And many times we act as mirrors for each other, showing us either what we're blind to seeing, right? Sometimes we can see our friends working on something. And we're like, wow, I never thought about looking at it in that way. And that opens up or we can see them struggling and going, wow, why aren't they seeing this part? Either way can help us get more awareness about our own journey and, uh, and for us giving them awareness about their journey. So there's a real blessing in having a group or a friend, someone right now who is also doing this work that you can relate to and sort of share processes with uh, that will help speed up the process. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Karma Cards. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a like or sharing it or subscribing to my channel if you 
haven't yet because I've got so many things that I want to bring you. Of course, you've got the karma cards that are happening and there's lots of meditations and affirmations popping up on my channel every week. And until I see you next week when we will have the full moon in Capricorn, I'm sending you so much love. I know you've got this. I'm excited to hear what glass ceilings are breaking for you. Mwah.